Good afternoon. I'm Molly Bates. And I'm Lucas Taylor. Thank you for joining us with the Pike TV Panther Power Hour, where you can tune in to catch up on the latest Pikeville Panther news. The school year has barely started, but PHS has already done quite a bit for our community of Pikeville. Pikeville High School has participated in various community service projects, such as a gift drive for students in Haiti, a Play-Doh drive for Judy's Place for Kids, and service projects through the ASBCA and the Pikeville Medical Center. Students also contributed to the efforts for Paint Pikeville Pink. We want all of our listeners to realize that Pikeville High School is dedicated to making the community a better place. Our first service story involves a school-wide project that PHS participated in during the month of September. The project was to benefit the March of Dimes. March of Dimes is a foundation that raises money for premature babies and their mothers. On September 21st through the 23rd, Pikeville Elementary School and Pikeville High School came together and collected money for the cause. Our elementary presented much enthusiasm during the event and raised $1,659.62. The high school raised $720. At the walk on the 24th, Pikeville School District was well represented by our faculty, staff, and students. Hi, so I'm here with Andrea Humphreys. Andrea, so what's the reason that you're here today? I'm here because um, five years ago at uh, 31 weeks gestation, I had my triplets, Cooper, Corbin, and Cole Humphreys. Uh, like I said, they were born at 31 weeks gestation. Cooper was three pounds, 10 ounces. Corbin was 211 and Cole was 115 and um, I just wanted to be here to uh, to encourage I wanted to encourage everybody to support the March of Dimes because it did do so much for us and the research that uh, the funds the research that goes toward March of Dimes um, supports such causes as um, providing surfactant for the lungs for premature infants it uh, provides the research to help moms uh, who go into premature labor like I did to help uh, help them go on further in their pregnancy and there are so many things the March of Dimes does and because of the research the March of Dimes did I have my babies today they would not have been born as healthy as they are or they may not have even lived if it wasn't for the March of Dimes so how do you feel when you see everyone walking for this cause uh, I'm just it, it overwhelms me every year and you know just uh, because I just think that everybody needs to get behind this cause because this is our future. And if we didn't have, uh, we, if we don't have funding for uh, causes such as March of Dimes, then uh, then there are so many babies that would not be as healthy as they are and that would not have the life that they have today. Thank you so much, and you have three great children. Well, thank so, you. And uh, their grandparents are behind us. Great grandparents, great everything. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Hi, I'm here with Michelle Varney. So, what's your experience been today? Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful cause. We've had a great time so far. The weather hasn't cooperated, but um, lots of supporters raised over $30,000 for the March of Dimes, so can't ask for anything better than that. How do you feel about the people walking for this cause? Well, it has to be near and dear to their hearts. Um, you know, they have to, most people have a personal experience or know someone who's had a preemie or who's been helped by the March of Dimes, and you know, a lot of people are helped by the March of Dimes and don't even realize it. So I've heard you had a story. Um, could you share just a little bit of that with us? Yeah. Um, well, this is Gabriel, and he's staying out in the rain. But um, he was born at 34 weeks, and we spent uh, three weeks in the NICU. And uh, he was um, had some little issues with his lungs, and um, we we got past that, and we are good now. But um, and also, I had a little boy um, last year at 25 weeks and he lived 13 days. His name was Gunner. Um, and, you know, I, I, one of the reasons this is near and dear to my heart is because, you know, I, I feel like truly, you know, if, if there's all this research coming in for the March of Dimes, that they'll come up with a way so that babies won't have to die. So. Well, he's beautiful. And this is a great you. thing you're doing Thank here today. You. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. On August 20th, the community of Pikeville got together to promote breast cancer awareness and to raise funds for research and awareness efforts. Many clubs from PHS united to help with the cause. Members of the Student Council, FBLA, and key clubs volunteered at the race to motivate participants and to hand out water. All of the PHS cheerleaders from elementary age to varsity level helped cheer the participants on to finish. After the community event was completed in August, the Student Council decided to further the work by hosting Dance Pink. In this project, funds were raised for the Susan G. Komen Foundation. This is the same organization to which Pikeville Pink donated its funds. The dance was a great success in both our school and the community. At Pikeville High School, the Student Council works as a liaison between students, faculty, and the community. 
Future plans for Student Council include Lunchroom Appreciation Day on November 9th, where members of the council will give the cafeteria staff a day of relaxation by relieving them of their duties. Student Council will also participate in Secret Pals. Members will give thanks for PHS staff by making them treats every month. On September 16th, the Pikeville High School Key Club and Future Business Leaders of America Club visited Signature Healthcare where they made crafts with the residents. These groups visit monthly to share quality time with their adopted grandparents. Students receive volunteer hours for participating, however, this is not their main goal. FBLA and Key Club strive specifically to make a difference in the lives of people in our community. Here at PHS, we have many clubs and organizations that work to better the school and the community. One of these clubs is the Pride Environmental Club. The next big Pride event is America Recycles Day. This will be held on November 15th. Members of the Pride Club will be stationed at Walmart and Velocity Market in Pikeville to encourage recycling. Educating the community about our environmental impact is our main goal of this event. Another club that students at PHS participate in is the Pike County Youth Leadership Council. PCYLC is an organization made of students from every school in Pike County dedicated to making a positive change in our community. Members meet once a month to plan community service projects and public advocacy projects while being trained to be leaders. Members from PHS are Lucas Taylor, Isha Narola, Reese Ward, Krishna Amistetti, Hina Shandell, Emily Hall, Sarah Byrie, Andrea Rowe, Nathan Terry, Laura McGuire, Rachel Hazlett, and Adam Taylor. Our school cares about many aspects of the high school experience, from sports to community service to extracurricular activities. But when it comes down to it, the most important thing is making sure that the students gain an education that will transform them into the intellectuals and the leaders of our next generation. Recently, PHS students participated in testing. 7th and 8th graders took the Explore, 9th and 10th graders took the Plan, and the juniors took the Kaplan ACT. Our next story is about an exciting new team here at Pikeville High School. On September 9th, the PHS dance team had their first performance at halftime of the football game. This is the first time in 10 years that PHS has had a team. The team coach, Ms. Shana Bevins, says that the girls on the dance team really enjoy dancing and she feels that they will be good role models for the community. After their performance, the girls were praised for their hard work and dedication. In other news, the cross country team is off to a great start this year. Nathan Mullins has been hired as the new head coach, along with Lisa Asbury as assistant coach. The junior high members are Lexi Lewis, Myra Deskins, Erica Kahn, Josh Stump, and Callie Leisure. The high school members include Emily Hall, Evan Hall, Ida Pank, Aaron Shepard, and Dalton Stanley. The team hosts to meet at Bob Amos Park every Tuesday and Thursday at 5.30. The PHS golf teams have really excelled this year. The girls team includes Lindsay Eisner, Stacy Gooch, Amber Sexton, Lauren Blackburn, and Leah Vanderbeck. This team plays second in the All-A Region Golf Tournament. Lindsay Eisner placed second overall and Stacy Gooch placed third in the All-A Region. Both girls qualified for state. And this weekend, Lindsay Eisner won first place at the Regional Tournament, shooting a 76. Will Branham, Will Boyd, Noah Combs, Jacob Hamilton, Tyler Hall, and Devin Ramsey make up the boys golf team. The team won the All-A Region Tournament, breaking the record for the lowest scores ever posted in the All-A Region Tournament. Will Branham won individually, shooting a 69, and Will Boyd received second, shooting a 70. The Panthers played in the All-A State Tournament in Paducah and placed fourth overall, and Will Branham placed third in the state individually. It's no secret that the PHS football team is off to a great start this year as well. This year, the team went 4-0 for the first time since 2000. Quarterback Randy Maynard stated that the team also has a good chance of going 8-2 for the first time since 2004. The seniors are Brenton Belcher, Blake Robinson, Austin Clevender, Dougie Smith, Landon Tackett, J.P. Coleman, Chris Habern, Gavin Miller, Randy Maynard, Colby McPeak, Zach Berge Van Hoos, Nick Jones, Austin Adkins, Tolliver Hefner, and Zach Howell. And this year's coaches are Chris McNamee, Sean Thacker, Billy Johnson, Steve Johnson, Brandon Huff, J.D. McCoy, and Matt Walls. Our next topic is the Pikeville Panthers girls soccer team coached by Jodan Van Hoos and Hagen Bush. This year's team is made up of 12 juniors, 4 sophomores, and 6 freshmen. We would like to congratulate these soccer girls here at Pikeville for having an amazing season, winning 11 games, tying 1, and only losing 2. 
They are third in the region. The PHS Lady Panther season is almost over. There are only a few games left along with the district tournament and the region tournament. District tournament is the second week of October and region is the third week of October. The locations are to be announced, so stay tuned for more information. We would like to spotlight the junior high academic team, which is coached by Sherry Lane. This year, the team has an outstanding record so far, winning three of four quick recall matches. Also, congratulations to the middle school academic team for their outstanding performance at the first EKAC academic meet on September 24th that was held at Mullins Elementary. Two special congratulations go out to Michael Gaunt, who placed second in Arts and Humanities Written Assessment, and Sam Bishop, who placed third in Social Studies Written Assessment. In other news, we want to congratulate the 2011 Pikeville High School Homecoming Court. For the boys, this year's freshman attendants are Ben Maynard and Austin Charles. Sophomore attendants are Austin Kidd, Mac Hall, and Chase Hall. The junior attendants are Jacob Burke, Ethan Rowe, Alex Davis, and Joe Potter. And this year's senior king candidates are Nick Jones, Randy Maynard, J.P. Coleman, Zach Bergie Van Hoos, and Gavin Miller. And for the girls, this year's freshman attendants are Emily Altman and Kaylee Markham. Sophomore attendants are Cassidy Coleman, Delaney Hackney, and Kirsten Kahn. This year's junior attendants are Leah Bartley, Jenna Bartley, Jessica Branham, and Laren Hamilton. And the senior queen candidates are Molly Bates, Lindsey Cheney, Taryn Cantrell, Lauren McGuire, and Cassie Huff. Congratulations to all the students who were voted to be on court. As students in the Pikeville Independent School System, we would like to personally thank all of the faculty and staff that worked so hard to provide the students a terrific learning experience. On that note, Pikeville Independent would like to welcome Ms. Paula Martin and Ms. Annie Hobbs-Sword to the teaching staff at Pikeville Elementary School. Although new to the district as teachers, both Ms. Martin and Ms. Sword are alumni of the Pikeville Elementary School and Pikeville High School. Mr. Joseph Taylor Mahan and Ms. Libby Lockhart-White were recognized for their outstanding athletic and coaching contributions to Pikeville High School on Friday, September 8th. Both were inducted to the Pikeville Hall of Fame during the induction ceremony held at Pikeville High School. During the 1977 through 1981 and 1983 through 1994 school years, Mr. Mahan served as assistant football coach and head track coach. During his tenure, Coach Mahan helped lead the Panthers to two state runner-up football championships in 1979 and 1991, and three state football championships in 87, 88, and 89. Coach Mahan coached numerous all-state linemen and several state champions in individual track events. Mrs. Libby Lockhart-White was recognized for both her athletic and coaching accolades at Pikeville High School. As a student at PHS during the 1975 through 1975 seasons, Libby qualified for several state meets in track. As a basketball player, Libby played on an undefeated regular season team, and in 1978 and 79, her team captured the regional championship. After high school graduation, Libby played for Pikeville College. In 1984, she started her teaching and coaching career at Pikeville High School. As head coach for the Pikeville Lady Panthers, she led her team to district titles in 84 and 1990. During 84 through 92, she coached her softball team to six regional titles. From 94 to 2008, Libby was instrumental in leading both the girls track team to nine regional titles and the boys track team to 11 regional titles. As cross country coach for boys and girls, the boys captured regional titles in 2002, 2004, and 2005, and the girls captured regional titles in 1998, 99, 2000, 2003, and 2006. As we know, grandparents have a tremendous impact on our lives. To honor these family members, Pikeville Elementary hosted their third annual Grandparents' Day on September 8th. During this new tradition, grandparents are invited to enjoy lunch with their grandchildren. A total of 385 grandparents came to this event. Ms. Dawn Rowe, event coordinator, was pleased with the support shown by their grandparents and would encourage them to visit throughout the year to become involved with their grandchildren's education. This event is hosted by the Parent Liaison Program, Family Resource and Youth Service Center, and Title I. Pikeville Elementary brought the farm to school on Thursday, September 22nd. Parents and students enjoyed a night on the farm during Family Literacy Night from 5.30 to 6.30, with special guest appearances by chickens, ducks, geese, goats, and rabbits. Eighty-four students were present to enjoy the farm animals and a learning activity involving the animals. Teachers from each grade level led the activity with assistance from Pikeville High School students. Ms. Dawn Rowe, Family Resource Service Director, coordinated this event. 
Pikeville police officer Mike Baldridge was recognized at the Pikeville Independent Board meeting held on Tuesday, August 16th. Board Chairman Dr. Mark Myers presented the award of recognition for his tremendous efforts both paid and unpaid at Pikeville Elementary School. Officer Baldridge is Pikeville Elementary School's D.A.R.E. officer. D.A.R.E. is a 15-week drug awareness program provided for all 5th and 8th grade students. In addition to D.A.R.E., Officer Baldridge conducts a personal safety program for all preschool, kindergarten, and 1st grade students. The officer's commitment to Pipa Elementary School is greatly appreciated. We would like to wish my grandfather, Robert Burke, a very happy birthday. He celebrated his 102nd birthday on September 25th. Now it's time for sports news with me, Randy Maynard. And Austin Burke. The PHS football team started the season off 4-0, but hit a small speed bump these past two weeks and are now 4-2. Two. two of the first four games were thrillers, beating Harlan 21-14 and Raceland 21-20. Quarterback Randy Maynard was named Pike County Bowl MVP and was recognized as Player of the Week after the Raceland game, with seven and a half tackles, 200 passing yards, and 150 rushing yards. After the Valley game, both PHS boys and girls soccer team traveled to Belfry stealing the number one seed in the district with a win over Belfry. Boys, 2-1. Girls, 4-2. The boys' soccer team go into the postseason with a record of 11-3-1, and, and the girls' soccer team, 13-2-1. The boys' soccer team is coached by Mr. Phil Heffington, and the girls' soccer team is coached by Mr. Joe Dan Van Hoos. The PHS volleyball team, coached by Kelly Cecil, is ranked fifth in the region with a record of 14-10, and 10, one of the toughest schedules the Panthers have faced. The Panthers captured the Blue Division Championship during the Allen Central preseason tournament. The Panthers also beat Belfry for the first time in school history at Belfry. Pikeville Panthers senior Lindsey Eisner won the 10th Region Golf Tournament on Tuesday, September 27th, shooting a 76, and sophomore Stacy Gooch received third, shooting a 92. The tournament was held at Raven Rock Golf Course in Jenkins. They both qualified for the state tournament, which will be hosted at Bowling Green Country Club on October 8th and 9th. Lindsey Eisner also received second place earlier this year in all the regional golf tournament held at Green Meadows Country Club and is the first individual girls regional champion from Pikeville High School in girls golf history. Stacy Gooch placed third in this tournament as well. Lindsay and Stacy both played in the All-A State Golf Tourney in Paducah on Saturday, September 10th, and Lindsay finished 12th in the state. The Pikeville Panther golf team is coached by Miss Cindy Stewart. That's it for Sports News with me, Randy Maynard. And Austin Burke. Deuces. Molly Bates and I'm here with Miss Paula Smith, the art teacher from PHS, for our first teacher feature. She's being recognized today for her achievements as the art teacher at PHS. Miss Smith, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. Um, I've been teaching for 25 years. I attended Pikeville Co College and transferred to UK. I have a master's in secondary arts and a rank one in studio arts. I have a daughter named T Tara and she's going to be a teacher too. Um, I have a great nephew named Isaac and a great niece named Va Vanny, and they help me understand and enjoy every moment of life. My husband Ter Terry basically puts up with all the things I do and helps me with my business. That's great, great Miss Smith. Now what classes do you teach at Pikeville High School? I teach Art 1, General Art 1, mm -hmm. Art 2, uh, Advanced Art and Graphic Design. This is des this, these courses are designed so students will be able to take art all four years of high school and be able to gradually get in a more, a more difficult course and be able, when they go to college, be prepared if they decide to major in art. Absolutely. And Ms. Smith, what made you want to become a teacher? And more specifically, what made you choose the subject of art? Well, my first experience with teaching was in my church and I was probably eight years old and I taught four and five year olds and I love to prepare lessons and to prepare crafts and I just caught the teaching bug. 
Um, it's something I've always enjoyed school and I've always enjoyed working with, with kids, young kids, older kids. And um, it's, I think I was born to be a teacher. Absolutely, that's great, great. Um, what is your favorite style or media or art form to teach in class or to create yourself? Um, watercolor is probably my favorite to teach. Mm -hmm. I always tell my students that watercolor is like a teenager. You need to know when to hold it and when to let it go. <laughs> because with watercolor, it can be very abstract, very realistic, um, and it takes a little bit of finesse to, to work with watercolor. Uh, I love teaching all the mediums. Design is one of my fa favorites. I love to teach uh, my students to understand the language of art. Mm -hmm. Once you understand the lang language of art, history, science, everything else becomes easier. It's being able to look at uh, symbols, interpret them, and to understand the meaning uh, you know, behind them. And that makes you a more visually ad adaptive per person. Yeah, there's a lot of intellect involved with being an artist. Um, who is your favorite artist or your favorite, mm. I guess I already said favorite style, but who's your favorite artist? Um, we visited the New York m Museum and I walked into a room of Cassatt's. She is a woman pa painter and she painted a lot of everyday scenes mm -hmm. and she can take a little dot of color and create flesh or eyes or hair and she always recorded the everyday scenes of life and so when I got a chance to go and sit in, sit in this room around her artwork I literally burst into tears. I've never been so moved by a body of work in my life so she's definitely one of my favorites. She was a rebel. Uh, she did things her own way and I'm kind of like that too. Um, she loved to paint and I do as well and she loved her, her family and she painted a lot of mother and child uh, po poses. And my nephew, my daughter, my, my niece, they, they, they mean the world to me. And so I enjoy those types of scenes. So I can tell how, with these paintings that you have back here on display, how you like to do just everyday scenes of everyday life, especially just things around Eastern Kentucky. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, your personal career as an artist? About, um, I see you have a studio at yes. Quill, Quill Quail Ridge, is that what it is? Quail, Quail Ridge Studio. Okay, mm -hmm. could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, well, I have always created art all through the years and started working thinking, well, I'm going to retire in a few years. I think I'll get into it a little bit more. So um, I started doing portraits for friends and, and different types of things. And then I thought, let's try to sell some. And it all just blossomed from, from there. I have a website. I have prints available. And one of the things I'm most proud of is my coal series that I started. Um, during the Upper Big Branch mine disaster, as I watched t t TV, I looked at the faces of the people and I realized these are my people. My dad was a miner, my, my uncles were uh, miners, and I could feel their pain and I knew that I was part of them. And so I, I looked for my f photograph of my gran grandfather. And uh, this is my grandfather in the mines in 1915. And as you can see from the picture here, um, I embedded coal dust into each of these works of art. And I used coal to tint my paint and also to shade. So real coal, like you actually took pieces of coal and real, incorporated Real it. coal. I used three seams of coal, um, concrete number three, soil seam, and Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. Those are my three seams that, that I use. And I use a binder, which that's my secret, I'm not telling that one that helps the coal and paint mix and um, I create these portraits and and the reason I do this is because I want to um, record the lives of common man, the common miner, the common person. I want to be able to um, keep a record of times that are past and this particular one my grandfather was 17 uh, going into the mines and it was taken in 1915 and so when I found this picture I thought how cool it would be to try to do some watercolors and it's kind of blossomed from from there. Wow that's amazing Miss Smith. Can you tell us about some more of these pieces of art that you have while we're talking about these? Yes this is the Coles series also. This is my husband's uncle Al Alvin Smith and he is um, an older gentleman now but this is Alvin at age eight, 18 
and he's waiting for a ride to go to work and you can see his house is way up on the hill like houses are around here and it's springtime and if you look at this print you can see he has kind of a worried look on his face and in springtime you know there's a lot of mining disasters and slides and such so I just wonder what he was thinking as he went to work that uh, that day. Um, he's, curr he's currently ill now and when I showed him this work of art he was thrilled. Um, I don't really copy photographs. I look at, I'll take two or three different ones and make them, you know, um, into one scene. And all this part of it I make up as well. So it just depends. It comes from part photograph, part me, part my memory. This was my grandmother's house. Um, and I remember how her house set up on the hill. And so it all just kind of comes together to create a unique work of art. That's beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, okay, now aside from being an instructor, Miss Smith, um, you're also very involved in the community as I understand it. Can yes. you tell us about some of the other things that you do with the community besides being a teacher? Well, I'm ad adjunct at the University of Pikeville now mm -hmm. and I'm working on an art, art history course there and I have around 27 students in class. I love it. Um, I go up in the evenings af after my school day here and uh, I'm enjoying the class. The kids are getting uh, in, uh, interested in art and they seem to like it. So, you know, it's kind of a fun, a fun thing to do. When I first started to school, I went to Pike, Pikeville then and uh, they encouraged me to, to go on and, and do all the things that I could do. And so I feel like that I owe them a, a debt. I feel like they started me out on my pathway to college and I worked at the college for a little while as a student. I loved it. Um, I've always had so many people through my life helping me, you know, along. And uh, there's way too many to, to name, but um, I feel like when I teach at the college, I'm giving a little bit back to them. And um, I would love to continue that. Great, great. Um, I also understand that you are really involved with the ASPCA. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I do have a painting here, actually a pastel. Each year at the Bark in the Park, um, they sell chances for pet portrait. I have a lot of pet portraits as well. Um, and so this particular one, um, uh, this family won a portrait and they have a, a black poodle. And so I do a free portrait, they sell chances. And so each year I do this and then they get all the proceeds, of course, and I give the family a portrait. And, um, they're always really pleased with them and this particular one is for two small girls that have a black poodle and I'm really excited that they'll enjoy this and I'm told it's their biggest fun fundraiser for that particular day so I'm excited to be able to donate my time and my artwork to help the a ASPCA so oh that's that's amazing Miss Smith I love Thank how you. All of your artwork just goes to help our community. Like Thank this you. is a direct community service. Thank you. And you've shown support for coal around here and for the college with your teaching at the college. It's just amazing how much you can do for Pikeville by with your art. It's Thank you. it's amazing to me. Um, you seem like a really, really busy person. Could you tell us a little bit about your life outside of teaching and maybe even outside of art? Tell us a little bit about your family, maybe, a little bit about your hobbies. Well, of course, I spend my time working on my artwork, and I spend as much time as I can with my niece and nephew. Um, I teach at the college. I do, of course, work here at the high school as well. And um, I love to have time looking at the trees and the leaves and the, and the animals. I have pets. I have three cats. And um, just to kind of have downtime and, and observe the sky and the mountains and the trees because that's me that's where I'm from that's how I am and um, I enjoy uh, having that type of, of downtime because otherwise I would really stay busy all the time. <laughs> oh, that's great. Since you're talking about um, nature and how much you love just observing the outside world can you show us some of these other paintings that you brought with sure, you today? Sure. This one is my mother's home place and I have a favorite one I'd like to sh show you as well. Um, this is the house that my mom grew up in, and this is done in sepia ink, and she had an old photograph, and when I painted this for her, I left the gate open so that she could always go home again. And this was a Christmas gift for my mother. I love doing homes and houses because that's so important to, to us. Um, I think we all have a memory of a special home that we feel like we can always go back, back to. 
Uh, this particular log cabin is from my husband's uh, home, home place, and this is done in pet, pastel. Uh, it's a softer kind of work other than the, the ink, and it also is a place I think that people hold near and dear. And I like to take, I think family and home and uh, the emotion that you have when, when you look at a piece like this is common to all of us here. I think in, East, in Eastern Ken, uh, Kentucky we have a strong hold on family and land where we grew up and I think that's all part of who we really are and that's what makes us such a special place. Absolutely, I'm, I'm so glad that people realize that. Um, now because I'm a student here at PHS, I realize how big of an impact teachers have on their students and specifically the impact that you have on students. Thank you. Um, one of my dear friends, Luke Huffman, he just, you've impacted his life so much, I know. Could you tell us a little bit about how you feel about the students in your job as a teacher here? Well, all I can say is I enjoy every minute. Even if you have a difficult class or an easy class or I always look for the best part of every child and um, I try to make my classroom a place that is welcoming, uh, that's open. Um, students can come in and kind of use a different part of their brain. Um, art uses the, the, the right side of the brain and it's a, a part that you really don't get to use much in school um, and it gives them a place to kind of relax a little bit. Um, I also like for students to know that in art that you know there's not a particular way to do something there is no right or wrong answer and I want my classroom to be a place where kids come in and and feel comfortable and respect each other I do a lot of social type teaching too as far as you know you got to clean up after each other you got to help each other you got to respect each other and um, each child is special and I just try my best to find out what's special about each child and bring that out at home I have a trunk full of, of letters and notes from students and I literally mean a trunk and uh, it's just amazing to, to look back and see what you can do in 25 years. So, That's, You really have made such an impact on all of us here at PHS. Um, now I can tell from the things that you've been saying that you really, really enjoy what you do. Do you think that you could be happy doing anything else with your life right now? Mm, I think I was born to be a teacher. Absolutely. For sure, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, and what are your plans after teaching? Well, when I retire, I'm going to work on my studio. And I have prints available now. I have a website, pstuartsmith.com. And um, I do festivals when I'm off from school. And I'm going to, I would like to, I think Pikeville could be a place like Gatlinburg. I, I would love to see a little artist place all, all up and down the street. Artisan Center, I understand, is coming um, back again. I'm glad about that. Um, I would love to see this be a little artsy town. And we have talent here like none other. So many, so much musical, voice, art talent here. And I think I would like to be able to help with that, to kind of get that going and, and uh, bring the arts alive. And I've you know, worked in the classroom all these years and branched out to the college. And uh, I'm doing my own art, artwork now. Uh, which, as I say, I've always done it, but now as a business. And um, I'd like to do some things for the area to see if I could help, you know, promote the arts around this area. Wonderful. I think one of the best things about Pikeville, the community, is that we all work together to meet this one goal of bettering mm. the community. True. And I think it's so beautiful that you've done that through your artwork. So um, thank you so much, Miss Smith. We've really appreciated having you on the show for our first teacher feature. Oh, thank you. Um, Thank you for all that you do for the students and for the community of Pikeville. Thanks. Thank you for joining us with the Panther Power Hour on Pike TV. This has been Molly Bates. And Lucas Taylor. Bringing you your Panther news.